our project is on a small boat. Uh, we have a, a house battery bank and a cranking battery bank for the engine. This is a, a small dinghy boat with the only one, only one engine. Of course, only one alternator. Okay, uh, we have uh, the house battery bank, the cranking battery bank, and uh, we have a, uh, what is this? That's the bus bar. The constant positive bus bar. And uh, where is coming the power for that bus bar? That's coming from the... Which battery? House. House battery bank. From house battery bank, I am going to fit this positive bus bar. Okay, and... Uh, uh, the switch select uh, the ignition switch have uh, three terminals: battery, ignition, and a uh, signal. Uh, the te what is the, the 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 terminal for the input? Battery. Battery. And uh, where is coming that that power? On the positive bus bar. Enter here. That's the power coming in. No. Mm -hmm. What happened with the position ignition? That power is coming out, no? And Double enter one. in the ignition bus bar. Yep. All right. Now we have power in the ignition bus bar. We are going to crank the engine. That's the, the first step. Um, we have the crank relay. This is the crank relay. Where is coming the power from for the crank relay? The big power, where is coming? From? No. Uh, remember that the battery have two outputs. One output for uh, for cranking and uh, other output for the panel, for the DC panel. Okay. This this is, this output is for uh, for engine for cranking. And this is the power that enter here. It's a big cable. Number eight, number six. No, it's a big cable because it's a big power. Normally you have 60 amps, 100 amps in that cable. And that big cable is a cable like this. You see, it's, it's this. It's the cable from the batteries enter here and this is the cable that <coughs> enter in the positive of uh, the the solenoid of the star motor big cable okay and this is the, the same cable that enter here All right, and uh, but uh, I have power here. I have power here right now. No. No. Mm -hmm. What I need to get power here? The ignition cable. I need the signal in this terminal. Awesome. Coming from. From. The ignition bus bar. From the ignition bus bar. From the ignition ignition bus bar. Yeah, what is the color of that cable? Purple. Purple. And uh, the other terminal is? The ground. It's ground. Uh, which one is ground, which one is uh, is ignition? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Because it's a coil. No? It's the coil that magnetizes the iron, and the iron close the gap in between this <coughs> and this. All right? OK. Right now, I have power here. But uh, the motor is not spinning. Why? What is the procedure to pass the current from this big terminal into the second one? With a signal. You need a signal. You need a signal in this terminal. You need a signal. You need a small signal here, yellow red. And that signal, yellow red, is coming from the the signal on the ignition switch. The second position, momentary position. Okay, from the second position, I am going to bring a signal. What is the color of that signal? Yellow, yellow, red. yellow red. That signal is yellow red. And that signal enter here. 
in the in the signal and of course immediately the star motor engage and start. It's clear, guys? It's clear yesterday you practice with uh, Mr. Rodriguez with the with the uh, cranking system, no? Alright? Good. Okay, now we are going to connect the gauge. Temperature gauge, oil pressure gauge, all of those gauges. Remember guys that uh, all the gauge they have uh, in the back three terminals. The middle one is ground. One is the other one is ignition and the other one is signal. No? Ground, ignition and signal. All the gauge have the same nomenclature. And uh, on top other terminal. For what? For the light. This is the light bulb. The light bulb here. And the ground is connected with the ground. The ground of the light bulb is connected with the ground of the gauge. Okay? We have a ground in the middle, ignition, signal, and the ignition you jump it here for the light. In other words, when you turn on the ignition switch, the lights are on in the instrument. Ready? Simple. That's the connection. Okay, and the signal, the signal terminal is going to the sensor. The sensor, sensor for oil pressure, sensor for uh, uh, temperature, uh, sensor for uh, uh, fuel level, you remember? Okay, now we are going to connect those gates. But uh, before of that, I want, to, I want to tell you something about the sensor. Uh, once again, Today that we are going to talk with more details about those sensors. Let me explain something about those sensors. There are sensors, there are sensors with the only one terminal. Sensors with the only one terminal. This is the body of the sensor. Suppose that this is the temperature sensor, and this is the element that uh, sends the temperature. But uh, that that sensor and, and this is the thread. That sensor only has one terminal. Where is the ground of that sensor? Because the sensor is bolted on the block of the engine, the ground is on the body of the sensor. Ah, there are sensors, of course they are bolted, but they have two terminals. One terminal is ground, and the other one is the signal is the signal to the gauge. Okay? One is signal and the other one is ground. Which one is ground, which one is signal? Doesn't matter. No problem. When you have two. And for a uh, signal, would it be a low voltage like a three, like three volts? Yeah. Later we are going to talk about that. Those sensors in some cases they work with three three volts, three point five, three point six. They work in between, in between 0 0.2 volts until maximum 5 volts. The majority of the sensors. Where is coming that voltage? From the computer. The computer. Later we are going to talk in the computer. You can see the pins. You, you, you remember? Like a 32 pins. Yeah. Ah, okay. What is the pin for oxygen sensor? Ah, it's the pin 17. Ah, you, you check the manual. What is the voltage for oxygen sensor? It's 3.2 volts. Oh, if you check that voltage when the engine is running, it's around 3.2 volts. It's coming from the computer. But later, we are going to talk about that. OK, my friend, this is the sensor with two terminals. There are sensors, there are sensors that uh, the sensor have uh, three terminals. One is ground, the other one is positive, and this is signal. Signal for the gauge. There are other terminals with four terminals. Positive, neg negative, signal coming in, and signal coming out. One signal go to the computer, and other signal return from the computer into the sensor. Later, we are going to talk about those sensors. Throttle position sensor have two, four terminals. Um, a cramp position sensor. Yeah, depend of the engine, depend of the manufacturers. OK? But uh, basically, it's the same. Oh, Mr. Lopez gave to me an oxygen sensor with only one terminal. OK, that terminal is the signal. Because 
the body of the sensor is the ground. No, in, in the other project, I have a sensor with two terminals. Okay, one is negative and the other one is the signal. That's, that's correct? Don't forget this. When I have, when I have, this is the gauge, the gauge with the needle. This is the cable, and this is the sensor that is bolted on the block of the engine. The element that is bolted on the block of the engine is the sensor. The cable is the sender, and the gauge is the gauge, is the instrument. Gauge, sender, and sensor. That's the nomenclature in the future. Okay? Ah, this is the sensor? No, no this is the gauge. Ah, the cable, the pink cable is sender. And the instrument is the sensor. Good? That's for the future. Okay, this is only an introduction about the, the different type of, uh, of sensors that we are going to connect uh, in, this, uh, in this project. Okay, now we are going to continue with the connections. Uh, I want to connect the fuel gauge. Uh, what is the process to connect the fuel gauge, guys? What is the process to connect the fuel gauge? The fuel gauge have uh, two terminals here. One is ground and the other one is signal. And uh, what is the signal? What is the signal, guys? One is ground and the other one is signal. Where is located? Where is connected? To the signal, to the terminal signal, and is color pink. pink. Color pink. And uh, what about uh, this position ignition? It's connected directly to the ignition boost bar. Clear? Okay, and what about the middle one? It's, it's the ground and it's connected directly to the ground. No? Ah, this one also ground. This one also ground. And uh, that sensor for temperature have two terminals. One terminal is ground and the second terminal is for temperature. What is, what is the color for the the wire for the signal, temperature, tan, 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 tan. It's tan color. Okay, and now we are going to collect the oil pressure. Oil pressure. One is ground, one is ground, and the other one is the signal. What is the color for, for uh, the oil pressure sensor? light blue and is is here is connected here and the other one is the other one is ignition ignition and this one is also ignition all of them connected to the ignition bus bar good where is bolted the oil pressure sensor in your engine. What part of the block? You remember the bracket where the oil filter is bolted? In that bracket, you have a space for that sensor. Always is over there. Where is located? Where is located the sensor for uh, temperature? Excuse me. In the thermostat housing. All right. Okay. Good. This area is ready, and uh, we are going to connect, don't forget, the bilge pump, because uh, we have a bilge pump. Uh, this is the fuse. This is the fuse. This is the light bulb. This is the, the switch, three positions. We have uh, that switch here. We have the switch, three positions. One position in the middle for power coming in other position for manual position, other one for automatic position, uh, we have the fuse, and that's it. Okay, uh, where, where is the power entering in that system, base pump? 
What is the element number one that is connected with the power? Excuse me? The fuse. Thank you, Garfield. Thank you. The fuse. Anna, the bilge pump receives power from, from the panel. You have one breaker in the DC panel bilge pumps. From the constant positive push bar, directly from the batteries. That's correct. Okay, that's the constant positive push bar. Where is entering the power? In the fuse. After the fuse, what happened? The power goes to? 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 The switch. What part of the switch? The middle. Okay, what happened in the switch for automatic position? Where is connected the flow switch? In automatic or in manual? In automatic. If I select automatic position, the power enter here and the power continue in the, in the pump. Yes or not? Okay, what about in a manual position? The power goes Directly, directly into the pump. Ah, this is positive. This is positive. This is positive. All of them. I put a different color only to indicate manual. Ready? What other element I need connect? The light bulb. Okay, I am going to connect the light bulb in manual position. The positive of the light bulb will be connected here. And what about the body of the light bulb? Yeah. Infinito, that's the bilge pump. Everybody agree with me? It's clear, questions about this area? Today in the project, we are going to connect the cranking system. We are going to crimp the cables and we are going to check that the star motor start. <coughs> Good? On the starter, the starter goes to the wire. Where the wire goes to? The, the other one? Yeah. That terminal, that terminal enter in the winding of the motor. The second terminal. For that reason, you need enter in the first one. That's correct? And when you bring the signal yellow-red, the power pass to the second one, and additionally, because it's solenoid, no relay. Good? It's clear? All right. In this moment, this area of uh, my boat is ready. Looks simple, no? But uh, try to do in a small boat that's wiring. Okay, guys. Uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday we, we talked about uh, how to use uh, the multimeter. You remember? We are going to refresh the use of the multimeter. Uh, normally we are going to use the multimeter. It's better? No call? Yeah. Uh, the multimeter normally to read voltage, to read amps, to read ohms, to check continuity, beep, beep. Uh, to check uh, diodes, to check capacitors, and uh, to check frequency. Those are the main functions that we are going to use with this element. At the end of the second course, we are going to use all of those functions, diodes, capacitors, frequency, and we are going to be familiarized with all the functions of this. For today, we are going to explain the three basic functions, voltage, uh, amps, and ohms. Okay, which of those three functions? Uh, you need to be careful with the power of the systems. In which of those functions? Yes. In volts, in amps, or in ohms? In ohms. When you try to read ohms, how much is the resistance of that winding? How much is the resistance in between the end of this cable and the beginning of the cable? What is the recommendation number one? No power. No power, no power in, that, in that circuit. No power. Disconnect the power off. If you try to read ohms with power, you, what happened with the fuse of this? Yeah. Finito. No more fuse, okay? All right, we are going to check voltage, and uh, we have voltage in the, in the first function, it's voltage AC, the second one is DC. 
The first one is AC, the symbol, and the second one is straight, is DC. Okay, in this particular board, it's a DC board, no? It's a battery, it's a DC board. Uh, we are going to check voltage DC. Voltage DC in the second function, and it's supposed that uh, one terminal is in the common position, and the positive terminal should be in voltage, no amps, voltage. We are going to read voltage. And, simple, how you read voltage in general? Connecting the LEDs of uh, the multimeter parallel or series? Parallel. For voltage in parallel. And I am going to check the voltage of the battery in this moment. It's a 12.12. .12 because it's in, in, in parallel. Oh, I want to, to check the voltage of the panel. Remember that the panel have a negative boost bar and positive boost bar. Where is the positive boost bar in the panel? On the breakers, you see? On the breakers. And the power, the power in, 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 in the positive boost bar is coming, is coming, is coming from the battery, from the switch selector. Okay. This is the positive boost bar. And uh, this is the negative boost bar. 12.12, okay, it's okay. I have 12 volts in my DC panel. That's the, the properly way to check, to check voltage. I want to check amps. I want to check the consumption in amps of uh, this element, and I want to check the consumption in amps of uh, the pump. This is the fuel transfer pump. Uh, any of those elements, I am going to check how much is the consumption. Uh, for this example, we are going to use that pump. That pump is the breaker number three. You hear the pump. Okay, we are going to check in this moment uh, what happened with the breaker of that pump. Is on or off? It's off. What happened with the contactors internally? Are open or closed? Open. open. Okay, when I want to read amps, I need interrupt the cable and separate the cable. For that reason, use the breaker it's a great idea because this is the separation of the cable. I separate the cable in that point. In those two terminals, I can connect my ammeter and I read the amount of amps passing to, through the uh, multimeter. Good, guys? Okay, what is the no, no, number one recommendation when I try to read amps? Set. Right now, it's not in voltage, should be in amps. The positive in amps and the common in the in the negative in common position all right and now i select arms ac or dc in this particular case the last one dc arms dc and i am ready to separate the positive cable and insert the terminals of my ammeter to read the arms in this particular case okay and uh, this is the idea in this moment it supposes that the the breaker is off with the contacts open when I jump it, the contacts here, what happened? I close the gap and the pump starts. And immediately I can read the amount of amps. Simple. How many amps? 1.3, 1.27 amps. This is the consumption in amps. No, I want to read amps between, but no, my friend. This is parallel and you blow the fuse immediately. Always, always you need to separate the cable. Oh, but I, I don't want to. No, no, you don't need to separate. You have the breaker. The breaker separate the cables. In that point, you introduce your ammeter. Finito. Finito. Mr. Lopez, can I use uh, the clamp? The clamp? To, yes, you can use the clamps. Some years ago, uh, the clamps for DC are not uh, accurate. Uh, today, there are good clamps. I love this man, this uh, manufacturer, this brand, Fluke. Fluke have a good clamp. Why the reading of amps in DC is not accurate in comparison with the reading of amps in AC? With the clamp. Because the clamp is a magnet. Half of the clamp is the positive and the other half is the negative. When you close the clamp, this is the, the, the cable with power. Suppose that this cable have AC power. Do you remember the AC power? 
positive negative, positive negative. If I have this cable with AC power and I pass the clamp here, I close the clamp, it's easy because the signal jump at positive, negative, positive, and you can read the amount of amps passing per second, per minute. Ah, if the signal is a straight signal, never touch this one. But uh, they develop electronic devices to read the amount of amps in a DC cable. Today, there are good clamps for AC and DC. But uh, if you don't have the clamp, this is the procedure to use this element, the ammeter. Good, guys? Clear the explanation? Don't forget. Be careful with the position of, uh, of uh, the terminals. This is for voltage, and this is for amps. Great. OK, good. Now we are going to connect the panel, the DC panel. Give me, give me example of elements that are connected in, in a typical boat on the DC panel. Lights. Lights, OK. Other one? Bilge pumps on the DC panel? No. Directly, directly from the po constant post. You never have a breaker in the DC panel bilge pump? No. You have a the switch on the console bilge pump. But that switch depends on the positive boost bar. Those elements, macerator pump, wash down pump, fresh water pump, blowers, fans, they have breakers. They have breakers on the DC panel. The other elements, they have switches in the dashboard. For example, uh, the navigation light. Navigation, navigation light, you have, a, you have a, a, a button for navigation light over there. You have a button for bilge pump. Yeah. Those elements right? have constant power. Suppose that the, your boat is damaged and uh, you need to tow your boat. You call the tow company. And uh, the boat is towed in this moment, but you need uh, the navigation lights on. You activate the navigation lights on and the navigation lights are on, no? That's okay? You don't need to go to the DC panel to act, no. The DC panel is for some devices like fresh water system, lights, blowers, yeah? Okay? It's but the, the idea that uh, we try to transmit in this class is, uh, is the best way to connect that, yeah? To, the best way to, uh, to optimize those resources, no? For example, it's clear, it's clear that uh, I prefer constant power in my VHF radio. Doesn't matter if uh, everything is off. I want power in the VHF radio to call uh, the Coast Guard or uh, no. Okay, it's clear that uh, I want that uh, the fire suppression system, the fire boy system, is activated all the time. Doesn't matter if I turn off the breaker, the switches, everything. I have power on the fire suppression system. It's clear that I wanted constant power in this in the in the security system, the cameras. I, I left my boat. I go to other country and I want to check in internet my cameras. Ah, doesn't matter that everything is off, I have power on the on the security system. No? Those systems require constant power. Navigation lights, bilge pumps, radio, uh, cameras, uh, fire suppression systems, and, uh, uh, and also the router for, uh, for the satellite uh, communication. Yeah, because you need internet constantly. If not, it's impossible to check the cameras uh, that you have uh, in your boat, no? With your cell phone, if you don't have uh, internet, okay? But later, in the, in the course of electronics, we are going to learn the process to integrate all of them in the backbone, in the expressway. Okay, we are going to bring power to the DC panel. This is the DC panel, guys. That's the DC panel. Okay, uh, and uh, we have the ammeter and we have the voltmeter. Okay, and this is the chan. This is a, a new element that we are going to introduce here uh, in the connection of uh, the, the panels. Uh, we are going to enter the power. The power is coming, the power is coming from the output of the switch selector. And the, uh, the power enter here in, in the chunk and continue, continue to the panel. Why I need the chunk? What is the meaning of the chunk? This device, the chunk. This is, this is basically a resistor to protect 
the ammeter. Because what happened with that small ammeter if I enter 60 amps, 100 amps, probably is damaged internally. With that resistor, I am going to send a small signal to the ammeter to read the amps, no? In, 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 a, in a percentage according with the big amount of current. This is basically a resistor to protect the ammeter on the panel. Yeah. It, it, it's clear, it's a resistor that I am going to install in series to protect the ammeter of my, of my panel. Let me explain to you how is the connection. We are going to forget for one second the chunk. Suppose that this cable is connected with this. We have power here. In what breaker we are going to enter? In the main breaker. In some boats, let me explain something. In some panels, you have a main breaker here. And all of those are the small breakers. Follow me in this explanation, because this I, I want that you keep clear. Each boat is different. You, you call this, ah, oh, Mr. Lovers, in my boat I have a big breaker on top and a small, okay. Because in that boat, you have main breaker and a small breaker separated. Suppose that I have that situation. Big breaker on top and a small breakers on the side. Where is entering the power? In the main breaker. In the main breaker. The power enter here, and in the output of the breaker, after that, I feed what? The positive bus bar. And now all the breakers have power. Yes or no? Simple, no? Okay. But uh, in this panel that we have in our project, we don't have that main breaker separated over there. The first breaker here is the main breaker. And the other ones in the bottom are the small breakers. Okay, it's supposed that I am going to enter in the big one, no? In the, in the first one. Okay, I, in what part of the first one I enter? In the common connection or in the individual connection, the output? Individual connection. In the individual, for the main, I enter here, input, and now when I turn on the breaker, I close the gaps, I have power in all the rest of the breakers. Is clear? What happens if I enter here? I, have power in I cannot open or close the main breaker because I have constant power all the time. If you enter here, instead of this, you can turn off the panel, the power in the panel. No, you have power all the time in all the breakers. Everybody follow me? Yes or not? Yes. Okay, for that reason, I am going to enter, I am going to feed in the output. And now, when I turn on the breaker, I have power in the rest of the breakers, in the common. Good? And now, I can connect in this output lights, in this output blowers, in this output fresh water pump, raw water, yeah? Ba, 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 all the elements that I wanted. Good? All right. We are going to connect. This is the negative boost bar. Where is connected that negative boost bar? Connected with what? With the, the rest of the boat. With the other negative boost bar, the other negative boost bar, the other main negative boost bar in the engine room. All of the negative boost bar in the boat should be connected, only one. Is clear? No, Mr. Lopez, but I have all the negative boost bar in the flybridge should be connected with this. Check continuity between this and that one. Beep. Yes, it's connected. No, I have another one in the cabin, in the master room. Check. Beep. All of them should be connected together. If not, it's impossible to send signals. That's clear? Only imagine this. We are going to open all the people we are going to open a bank account in the same bank. Now I live in uh, Argentina. 
you live in, a, in the United States, you live in Colombia, you live in Europe, but all of the people have the account in the same bank. It's easy make wire transfer in between you and me and you and me and you and me? Yes, because it's the same, same. bank. And the main computer of the bank is in Manhattan. It's, it's common. Ah, no, my bank is different like your bank. Is easy a wire transfer? No, no my friend, you need that. Nah, nah, nah. After three days, you receive the money. <laughs> yeah? OK, we are going to do the same. And in the boat, all the negative boost bar should be one, <coughs> the same. After that, send signal, doesn't matter. Oh, it's from house battery bank. It's from cranking battery bank. It's from generator bank. Doesn't matter because all the negatives are together. Great, no? It's clear? All right. That negative boost bar is connected with the rest of the negative boost bars. Ground. Good? OK. We are going to connect the voltmeter. You remember how it's the connection of the voltmeter is in? In? Yeah. In parallel. OK. If you check the voltmeter in the back, they have two terminals. One terminal negative and the other terminal positive. OK. Where should be connected the negative terminal? Where? To the negative boost bar. bar. Simple. No? And where should be connected the positive terminal? Positive boost bar. Here in the, in, in, in the output of one of the breakers or here in the common? Oh. In the common. And now, bingo finito, my voltmeter is connected. OK. The ammeter. <coughs> OK. The idea, the real idea, is connect the ammeter here. This, and connect the ammeter here. But it's too much amps. I am going to use that resistor to protect the ammeter. That resistor on the side, if you check the resistor, if you check the chant, have a, a small plate of metal here. Depending where you put the, the plate here or here or here, they have different slots to put high or, or low. Depending where you put that piece of metal, you have more resistance or less resistance. OK? All right. You enter the big cable with 100 amps here, and you, con uh, and you continue with the big cable over there. And you have two small screws over there, you see? From those screws, you go into both terminals of the ammeter for the small ones with a small wire. What, what gauge? 16, 18, a small wire. OK. I am going to connect two small wires, two small wires, one here, and other one here. And bingo, this is the connection. Finito. That's it. What is the function of the chunk? Protect the ammeter. Depending of uh, the capacity in amps uh, is, uh, is the location of the plate here. This one is for a uh, maximum 50 amps. Yeah. This is for maximum 50 amps. You see? OK. Uh, we are going to connect, uh, for example, the blower, no? The blower. The blower have a one negative cable. When when I mark the negative like this, it's because it's this. No? You connect that one. And uh, also we are going to connect the positive here. And uh, what about the LED located here? And other LED here, and other LED here, and other LED here. The LEDs, the lights, they have one cable for negative and other for positive. All the negatives, all the negatives could be connected together, 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 all the negatives, and connected here into the negative bars. And the positives, 
where are connected the positives? Individual. In the output of the breaker. In the output of the breaker. In the output of the breaker. And now when the breaker is on, what happened with the LED? On. Breaker off, off the light. 